Welcome to the Lyseric Papers. Today I want to explain the fine structure constants in relationship to the second electromagnetic wave. To start off with, maybe we need a little refresher. Um, as explained in the previous videos, there are two forms of electromagnetic waves. One is the well-known oscillating electromagnetic field that propagates through space. The other is an electromagnetic wave that is made up out of particles. These are charged particles. I call them atoms. These charged particles create their own magnetic field, which they fly around or are held into orbit as they propagate through space. These atoms originate from the electron. And the electron is made out of these atoms, and two-thirds have to be, of course, negative, and one-third have to be positive. This allows for a structure that holds the negative atoms together with one-third of positive atoms. So fundamentally, you can create any particle with one-third, two-thirds charge dif difference. So the the antimatter of an electron is, of course, just the opposite, is two-thirds positive atoms and one-third negative atoms. So, basically what you have is these atoms are flying around the magnetic field that they create. The negative fly in one direction and the positive in the other direction so that they create the same um, magnetic field. And Fundamentally, this is how then the, electro the second electromagnetic wave looks like. Of course, it has one major difference. It actually has a mass. And this is why there is this huge confusion between the two electromagnetic waves, or why there was always this confusion regarding does the electromagnetic wave or a photon have mass or does it not? Another important aspect here is that, of course, each atom has a mass and a charge. The charge is basically balancing the centrifugal force, and so the charge to mass ratio is basically the speed of light. So because both charge and mass are constant, the speed of light or the velocity has to be also constant, which is then the constant speed of light. So as we start unraveling the actual meaning of the fine structure constant, we have to talk a little bit about the Planck quantum. As shown in previous videos, the uh, Planck constant is nothing more than this add-on flying in this electromagnetic helix orbit. Um, so having said that, one Planck uh, constant is could be also explained as, or the dimension of that Planck quantum qu constant should actually not be ampere second volt seconds, it should be ampere second volt second, which is an energy dimension because the frequency is directly proportional to the number of atoms. So since the atoms don't have a dimension, you don't need actually the ampere volt second. You can just write ampere second volt and leave out the ampere second volt second, the second part. Um, and so fundamentally, when you're looking at it this way, you can write that the Planck quantum times the number of atoms equals the mass of the electron, or let me repeat that, the, the, this new Planck quantum times the number of atoms of the Rydberg frequency equals the energy of the electron or the maximum energy of the electron spinning around the proton, which then basically as shown in formula one. 
So important here again, the fundamental change that I'm doing here is that I'm, I'm understanding that the number of atoms is equivalent to the frequency. Then I have to go back and also understand exactly what's going on and how to calculate the number of atoms in, in an electron and the number of atoms on the surface of an electron. The simple trick that I use here is that I declare each atom as one unit. And so the radius becomes the number of atoms in series across the sphere of the electron. So the radius is fundamentally a, just a number of atoms and it doesn't need a dimension. So then of course the volume becomes 4p times the number of atoms in the radius to the square uh, to the to the cube divided by 3 and of course for the surface um, you have the same fundamental um, surface formula of a sphere. With that understanding of what the sphere is and that as um, the picture on the right hand side showing the layers of the sphere of an electron, you have a clear understanding that um, there are these spheres made up of atoms. And so the Rydberg formula, all it is is really you have a number of layers minus a number of other layers that then um, are the number of layers that fly off as this second electromagnetic wave. Um, so if you spend a little time on the formula four and five, you will understand very easily how the Rydberg formula is nothing more than the subtraction of two sets of, of layers of the electron. Having clarified the actual meaning of the Rydberg frequency as being the number of atoms on the surface of the electron that can be detached as an electromagnetic wave, then the electron is a volume filled with atoms. So going back to the formula one, we can substitute the mass of the electron with the number of atoms in the electron times the mass of the aton. So when we substitute that and we also then substitute the meaning of, of, of the um, Planck quantum as the mass of the aton times the speed of light to the square we then, after rearranging the formula, det find that the fine structure constant square is nothing else than the, the number of atoms on the surface versus the number of atoms in the volume of the electron. So important here is that, of course, since the atom is, in terms of physics, a dimensionless unit, um, of course, then nice, the um, fine structure constant also has no dimension, physics dimension. So that's number one. Number two, the real reason is that mass to charge is what is causing the uh, electron to stay into a certain orbit and so that charge is determined by the surface of the electron and the mass is determined by the uh, number of atoms in the sphere of an electron. So naturally that important relationship 
will, you will find in um, the structure of the uh, electron and this that th the word is actually correct it is a fine structure constant because it explains basically the surface to the volume of an electron but remember also that fundamentally the speed of light is kind of like a fine structure constant too because it also describes the relationship of a charge to a mass. A couple more things to keep in mind here is that this clearly also means that the electron can have charges greater and smaller than the charge of an electron. The charges smaller than the charge of uh, the electron have been measured and that is the whole area of the fractional quantum Hall effect. Um, but interestingly, all the way back to 1909, there have been measurements, very precise measurements, about fractional electron charges. Actually, Professor Ehrenhaft at the University of Vienna in 1909, not only measured fractional, but he also measured charges that were greater than the um, um, electron charge. But the interesting thing is you can clearly see that he is measuring um, these charges in chunks. So, and these chunks are representing the exact amount of electrons that are on these different layers and therefore you measure a different set of charges. I think also that um, especially the charges larger than the charge of an electron have been measured but mistaken for other particles. The charges greater than the electron charge typically only happen when the electron is ex is in, in the excited state and orbiting around protons and atoms. But I can imagine that there's ways to create electrons that are have charges greater than E without them having to necessarily be orbiting. And so if you have these kind of um, uh, supercharged electrons, you could create really interesting battery properties, for instance. But I think the most important uh, takeaway here is that the electromagnetic wave, the second electromagnetic wave, could actually be rectified. And when I say rectified, um, I mean that there is a field that uh, um, is pointing against the field of the, the second electromagnetic wave and thus rectifies these atoms flying in the helix and fundamentally they would then no longer be held into the speed of light because the atoms wouldn't be creating a specific um, uh, field anymore so then that relationship charge to mass would change and fundamentally that would mean that you could uh, or these atoms could attain any kind of speed they would like to the interesting part of that is then you could have superluminal com communication. Um, there is already and has already s um, been this superluminal communication, which is known as evanescent light, or as Newton uh, already mentioned, it was the frustration of total reflection. And what it also means is that fundamentally when the light enters mediums, the medium creates this magnetic field that um, opposes the magnetic field of the light and thus uh, fundamentally slows down the light which um, can be you know seen in um, all the different mediums so um, that kind of comes to a conclusion here about the fine structure constant and 
the important relationship of charge to mass. And that, that is also true not only for the electron, but it's also true for the atom. So, yeah, um, I'd be happy to see a few comments, um, and I hope you liked this video, and I hope it was uh, in in instructive, and um, hope to see you guys again. Okay, thanks.